hello gang, what's poppin'? Please don't sue me. Uh, we're back for the Bornathon, where today I've read It Only Happens in the Movies, the story of Audrey Winters and her experiences with love, especially those involving a boy named Harry. Uh, I didn't have a lot of thoughts going into this, uh, I've only read it once and I didn't remember pretty much the entire storyline and that's why I rated it so low on my tier list because other books of Bournes I've only read once and they've really stuck with me because I really enjoyed them and I found them really poignant and obviously I found this one quite forgettable and now even though ooh, I really enjoyed the book, now that I'm done I still don't really have a lot to say about it. It's a cutesy love story with a side serving of roasted romance films and a sprinkling of family drama. And, uh, spoiler alert, Harry cheats on her at the end. <laughs> Uh, as a film buff, I really do appreciate Holly's attempt to deconstruct romances here and use it to teach young adults important real-life lessons in real-life love. Um, I'm not too keen on romances myself, and that's probably why my two lowest-rated books on this list are both, you know, romance-based stories, and I didn't think much of Places I've Cried either, and that's kind of also lessons in love that Holly's trying to teach us. Um, this is by far my favourite of the three, just because it features likeable characters with actual personalities <laughs> that I just enjoyed reading, um, though not nearly enough girl power to really instil that feminist energy in me that Bon has a habit of stirring up. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the ratings. Uh, like I said, uh, the two main characters in this book are my favourites by far. Uh, Audrey is still a cynic in true Holly Bourne fashion, but it's a much more toned down version than her other characters, and so it's easier for me to handle as the sunny person that I am. <laughs> uh, it doesn't hurt that Audrey's whole beef and the thing that she's most cynical about is romance films and the messages that they portray about love, because that's something that I also happen to have a gripe with. Uh, the love interest, Harry, is pretty charming and he seems to have some kind of a backstory that, while not exactly explored and a lot of it's left to the imagination, uh, it still makes him compelling and sympathetic. Uh, and even though he cheats on Audrey at the end, you get the feeling that it's not because he's a dick, uh, unlike, you know... Reese in places I've cried, um, it's because he genuinely made a mistake and the fact that Audrey still chooses not to get back together with him even though it was clearly a mistake teaches an important lesson about this not being an excuse and sometimes it's really the more you know healthy and sensible and even dare I say romantic thing to walk away from a situation like that. Um, one thing I did have a bit of a gripe with was that I thought Audrey's girlfriends didn't get enough development for me here, so I gave characters a 4 out of 5. Uh, I did find myself chuckling at this book quite a bit. Harry was obviously the funniest, and his, you know, cheeky, flirty quips were usually what got me giggling, but I also liked the use of humour when it came to discussions about sex in this book. Um, especially, you know, the embarrassing parts of sex. I find that bond has got this really interesting way of taking things that we can be anxious and insecure about and making them funny and making jokes about them so that we become less anxious and insecure. I really like that about her. And um, she also doesn't shy away from the fact that sex is not always movie perfect, which is something that books always try and emulate, like everything's perfect in a sex scene. That doesn't happen in this and there are still the embarrassing parts and the giggling and whatnot, which is more true to life, and I appreciated that. So, you know, three out of five. <laughs> uh, as far as representation, Bourne has done yet more research on love, this time in the form of romance movies. Um, I'm pretty sure she was already a fan, based on the extra content that I got at the end of my book, but um, she seems to have watched a lot of films in research for this book and Audrey's media studies project and she managed to provide both unhelpful and realistic examples of love in the media, uh, some of which I'll definitely be checking out myself. Uh, so that was fun for me as somebody who loves films. Probably I won't be crying as much as Audrey does in this book. Uh, she seems a lot more emotional than I am when it comes to watching films. I think I'm a bit of a hard nut. <laughs> Uh, another thing that Bourne did really well 
uh, in my opinion, was her representation of having a parent with drinking problems. I li it was subtly done, and I like the fact that the resolution wasn't complete, like she didn't just get better, her mum, uh, but it was positive, and the message was that being there for your family and working as a unit is really important, and sometimes this does mean that the children are looking after the adults, it doesn't always mean that the adult is looking after the kids, and I like that representation of different family dynamics, uh, you know, we haven't seen that before, so I like that. Um, as far as the message goes, this time a lot of our exposition comes in the form of a marriage counsellor that Audrey speaks to about her coursework. Uh, and my main takeaway from this interaction with the marriage counsellor was that love is a choice rather than a feeling. And even though I personally believe, you know, it's a little bit of both, the whole choice argument doesn't really come into a lot of adult, young adult fiction that I've read. Uh, and the fact that love is a choice at all didn't dawn on me myself until recently. Uh, I was pretty much as hopelessly romantic as Audrey's mum was. Uh, and now that I'm a little older than the last time I read the book, I understand just how important getting that message that love is more than just a feeling and perhaps a choice is. And I'm a bit gutted that I didn't realise this on my first read because, you know, I could have really done with that myself. Uh, always good to put your English head on when you're reading a book, even if it is the first time, <laughs> so you don't miss any of the important stuff. Uh, a four out of five for message. Uh, the femme factor, once again, I feel feminism sort of fell to the wayside here, although there was more of it here than in the other two books I've reviewed so far. Uh, I think that possibly bond has got a little bit more into her stride, she's a bit more well known as an author, so she's allowed to kind of inject her feminist message into books that don't necessarily require feminism, because, you know, we've come to expect it from her, we've come to love that about her, she knows that's what the readers are here for now. Uh, she's not afraid of it anymore, like I suspected she might have been in Soulmates. Uh, the Feminist Zombie Bride was pretty inspired, I'll admit. And um, Audrey's decision to ruin Harry's ending to his own film by having her kill her zombie husband-to-be, you know, instead of choosing marriage, it was poignant, but in a really silly way, and it really added to some of that humour that we were talking about earlier. Did I get that feminist feeling? No, but I definitely recognise the feminist themes, and so It Only Happens can have a 3 out of 5, which isn't bad. Uh, as far as my personal score goes, I really enjoyed reading this book and I only kind of half had my English head on because I was enjoying it so much, I didn't make as many notes, but at the same time I feel like it wasn't that complex and there wasn't that many notes to be made. Uh, you know, there's vibrant characters, they're just what you expect from Bourne, and there's actually a romance that you can root for in this one, you know, in despite knowing that it's not going to work out in the end. And speaking of which, this is the third review that I've done, and the third romance that hasn't ended well. And what I want to know is, what does Bourne have against team romances? You know, aside from the fact that they're statistically unlikely to last, and so her couple's breaking up is actually more authentic to real life, and allows her to teach youngsters about the importance of valuing yourself over your relationships. But fuck that, man, you know? I want a happy ending for once, God damn it. There's still a bit of that hopeless romantic left inside me, you know? <laughs> oh, God. Apart from this, apart from apart from that one little gripe right there, uh, I thought the focus on family was a really welcome change. It's something that um, I haven't seen explored in a lot of Holly's books yet. Um, even though it came at the expense of developing Audrey's relationship with her friends, which, you know, I would have liked to see more of since her circumstances changed her and her life so dramatically, it would have been nice to see a bit more of how this affected her friendships rather than a few throwaway scenes and lines, but that's just me in my opinion. Uh, so I'll give It Only Happens a fair 3 out of 5. <clears throat> okay, so that gives It Only Happens in the movies a whopping coming in hot with 20 out of 30, which is the highest score so far by long shot, and it places it at number one on our tier list for now. <laughs> uh, although a very nice story, not ultimately particularly memorable, uh, and mm, that's all I've got to say about it. Oh, thank you for watching. This has been a pretty short, pretty questionable review. 
and I will see you next time. Forgot my tea. Oh my god. Bye.